This is a still FS50 bench shafted strimmer and today we will be testing the vibration of this machine. This strimmer is held by the operator in two places, the first one being on this loop handle and the second one being on the trigger. This means that we'll have to take two readings, one here and one here. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll apply the accelerometer here with a Jubilee clip. So I'll get to that now. Before I conducted my vibration tests, I thought I may check the manufacturer's website for any early information into what my measurements may look like. However, I will take this information with a pinch of salt as manufacturers don't always test the machines in the same conditions I might. So it is always a good idea to get your own measurements. Right, now that we've mounted the accelerometer to the strimmer in the first location, what we're going to have to do is connect it to the actual uh, vibration monitor device. In this case, it's the Vibra 8, which is Castle sent over. Uh, this is probably the one that we'll get. It's got the whole body vibration kit in it as well, so we could be working with that eventually. So you want to put it in the top and make sure it's clipped in properly, make sure it's all secure. Red button to turn it on. Once it's booted up, it should bring up the measurements. I've had a little bit of a play around with it. So it's brought it up. So, yep. Yeah. So it's detected that the accelerometer is there. So if you can see, it should say HAV in the top corner in blue. So we're working on, obviously, the hand and arm vibration frequency. We don't want to be working on the whole body frequency because it's a strimmer. Uh, so what we want to do now is... It, you can see that it's actually detecting little movements because I've put my hand on the desk and stuff. So we want to take the machine outside now once we've got this, get the engine warmed up, get it turned on, and get it into a ready state. And once it's ready, we can start some testing and we can start getting some results for the first section of this test. After the first test, I got a high z-axis value, so I decided to do two more tests to give me three vector sums and then to take the average of those three to work with. Here are the results for the three tests and then the working out. Right, so for the second set of tests, we're going to put the accelerometer here and record the results. So I'll get to that and I'll get back with the results. Here are the measurements for holding the trigger. As you can see, once I've completed the working out of the vector sums for both the loop handle and holding the trigger, the loop handle had a higher value at 14.62 meters per second squared. I'll be using both within the report, however I will use the 14.62 meters per second squared as the value in the next set of calculations. 
While speaking with the operator, he told me that he uses the machine for two and a half hours. While the vector sum is at 14.62 meters per second squared, this means that he is occurring exposure points at the rate of 7.12 points per minute. 7.12 times 60 equals 427.2, rounded down to the 427 points per hour. As stated in the first set of calculations, it will take approximately 14 minutes to reach the exposure action value limit EAV, which by this stage will require the operator to be put under health surveillance. I can confirm these calculations are correct by using the halves calculator provided by the HSE. To conclude this video, I will end on the HSE calculator. The highest value calculated was 14.62 meters per second squared. I will place this value within the HSE calculator and it provided me with the operator's daily exposure at 8.2 meters per second squared. Very high above the exposure limit value of 5.0 meters per second squared. I will detail more actions that can be taken to reduce the risk of vibration in the workplace within my report. Thank you for watching.